Hi everyone, it's Laura, and we are back at the Garden Gate again today. If you've been with me for a while, you know that I have a vision for this spot that I've been trying to achieve for a little while. This was my latest attempt at that, and it has proven to be a bit of a failure, unfortunately. <laughs> So there's a couple things going on here. First of all, I got the tree. Second, I have the gate itself. The gate is no problem. I have a design in mind for that. We'll talk about that a little bit later. All I have to do is make it and switch it out. The tree is a bit of a different story. This is gonna be a much bigger project. I made a video a few months ago where I made this spooky tree and I was sort of happy with it, but I wasn't totally thrilled. And having lived with it for a little while, I don't like it. I'm not happy with it at all. So it doesn't, just doesn't match my vision that I had in mind. So I'm gonna make a new spooky tree for this spot. The purpose of the tree is twofold. Obviously for aesthetic purposes, it totally goes with the goth garden aesthetic. I love it and it's gonna be amazing. Second, I grow mini pumpkins in this spot anyway. This is where I grow my Jack B. Littles. I am inserting some footage of how it used to look here with the arch. Um, and I wanted to feature something different, something special. And I totally got inspired by the 1993 movie, The Halloween Tree, which is based off of a Ray Bradbury book. It's very existential for like a kid's movie, but it's awesome. And I thought, what better idea than to make my own Halloween tree? It will be up year round and it won't always have pumpkins on it. But my hope is that it looks really good and I'll just like to have it all the time. Not like this one here. I'm, I just, I don't like the flatness of it. We don't need to talk about why I don't like it. I don't like it, let's move on. And before we jump into that project, let's just go over the gate really quickly. When I'm trying to design the gate, what I usually do is I'll just go on Pinterest and get inspiration that way because obviously it's inspiration. Um, so I'll look up like cottage core or goblin core, fairy core, those kind of things just to get an idea of what I might want. And I'll pull elements from those uh, inspirations and come up with my own design, which I'll just sketch on paper and then I'll transfer that to my gate. I'm not the best artist. <laughs> there are some things that I am not very good at doing. So for example, this project in particular, I have never been good at frogs or toads. So I asked my husband, my husband is an actual artist. He went to um, art school. He can draw very, very well and paint and pretty much do anything. So he helped me with the frog. He is very good about helping me when I ask for help and not helping me when I don't because I don't like to ask for help very often and I don't really like getting help very often. I like doing things myself. Is anybody else like that? In my original sketch, I had wings on the caterpillar, um, kind of like Heimlich from A Bug's Life, if you guys have seen, um, but I didn't want to like trigger anyone. I didn't want people, people to be like, is this girl stupid or what is the deal? Like it's either a butterfly or a caterpillar. It's not both, right? So I, I skipped the wings, but I could always add them. And then my final idea for this was to add like a little bit of a 3D element. So I thought instead of just painting little flowers on, I have a billion little artificial flowers from my wig making. So I am gonna just like staple gun them to the board and have that on there and some moss as well. I think that'll be an adorable little finishing touch. Okay, now on to the spooky tree itself since this is the biggest project. I did have a piece of this like hard foam purple insulation that I found in my shed that I thought would be perfect just to get my project going. If you know me, you know that I like to try to do things for as free as possible. So the project that I have in mind is going to be using a lot of things that I already have. So I found this, this piece of foam or whatever with the intention of sticking this giant PVC pipe that I have in it. So just so that I can work on it so that I can stand the pipe up and work on it that way. 
instead of having it laying down. That would be like impossible. And because I was gonna build this tree in two pieces because it's gonna be big, so I found a, an old coat rack and I just took like the side pieces off and I slipped the PVC over top of that to use for my second piece. And then all I did was get spray foam insulation, which is one of my favorite things for craft projects. It is so versatile. When the girls were little, we made um, from Candyland. I don't know if you remember this guy. He's like the chocolate mountain. We made him out of spray foam and he was so awesome. But ever since then, whenever I have a project like this, spray foam is the go-to. I also drilled some holes in here so I could put some limbs in and for branches and things I use for the little ones I use some wooden dowels that I just had laying around and then for some for the larger branches at the top I used branches like basically I just I had branches laying in the yard I screwed those into the PVC and then I covered it with the spray foam insulation. And I did experiment a little when I first started out with just like different patterns of how to put it on. I found that like up and down, kind of like in a ribbed pattern was probably the best way to do it. Although I didn't do that everywhere. <laughs> it's got a lot of lumps and bumps, but once it's all spray painted black, I think, um, that it's mostly going to be camouflaged and it's going to look awesome. So here's the bottom piece. I'm about to go to town with the spray paint on this thing. It did take, when all was said and done, to probably took about three, four cans of spray paint and close to like six or seven cans of spray foam. But I did make it too big. When I put the two pieces together, it was way too big. I ended up having to cut off like two feet. I don't know what I was thinking. I, I, I know I've mentioned before, I'm not very good with measuring. I measured, I just measured wrong, I guess. But obviously I would have used less paint and spray foam if I hadn't um, made it too big. <laughs> so I was able to stack it up. I did have um, something in the middle to keep them you know, from falling up away from each other. So there's like a post in the middle of it that I screwed both pieces to. And then I just uh, spray foamed the connection to blend it together and then uh, painted on top of that. So, and here is the final look at everything together. And I love it. I am so much more obsessed with this tree than the last tree. I did put some finishing touches on here just with my hot glue gun, my trusty hot glue gun. I added some moss like in some of the cracks. I also added, I had this little bird's nest. So I added that with a little bird and a baby bird and a couple of little ladybugs on the tree and a butterfly. I had a bunch of stuff. So I just added it. I don't think I overdid it. I hope I didn't overdo it. I don't know. What do you guys think? Overall, I'm so much happier with this entrance. I think it looks so much better than before. It's ready for spring. And I cannot wait to see little Jackby little pumpkins growing up this spooky tree. It's gonna be so cool. So definitely, if you're new here, stay tuned, stay subscribed for the summer because it's gonna be so awesome. And that's about it for today. I thank you guys so much for joining me on this project. I have many more projects to come <laughs> and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.